here at Heritage Presbyterian Church, here for morning prayer on this Wednesday morning, the 25th of August. <laughs> Where did August go? Anyways, here we are for morning prayer on the 25th of August, Wednesday, 25th of August. I didn't have any birthdays in my news feed today, so we're just going to move right on in. At the beginning of morning prayer, we've been working our way through the Trinity Hymnal, and we are now at hymn number 296, an old hymn. All hail the power of Jesus' name. I'm going to read verse 1, 3, 4, and 6. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ye seed of Israel's chosen race, ye ransomed of the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Sinners whose love can ne'er forget the wormwood and the gall. Go, spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Go, spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. O oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. That was 296, all hell the power of Jesus' name. And now we're in our Bible reading. We are working our way through the gospel according to Luke. We are now at Luke 21, verses 10 through 24. Luke 21, 10 through 24. Jesus has just been asked about the destruction of the temple, what will happen. And he has warned people, don't be in a panic. Don't, don't give in to everybody who comes along saying the time has come, the time has come. And then he lays out... Um, some, uh, not signs necessarily, but what will happen when Jerusalem is destroyed in the temple. Then Jesus said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up by, uh, even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all, of your all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, when then know that its desolation has come near. Then let, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart. And let not those who are out in the country enter it, for these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days. For there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against his people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. That was Luke 21 verses 10 through 24. I know that sometimes um, people read that and think, oh, this is referring to our time. But Jesus is talking about the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD. You can hear that. In the you language he's using, as he's talking to the apostles, he says, you, this will happen to you in your time. You, you, you. He keeps saying that, emphasizing that. But it reminds us as well that um, sometimes things go really wry in our countries and in our, in our age and in our time. And we should always remember that at any moment, uh, things like this can happen. And we need to always be prepared, as Jesus said, um, by your endurance, you will gain your lives. Well, there you go. Let's pray. Lord God, we come this day and we come to you praying that you would give us wisdom as we and discernment as we read passages like Luke 21. We pray that you would help us, that it truly would be that our that we would have endurance, and by our, our endurance, we would gain our lives, that we would be wise to what's going on, we'd be faithful. And for all of our brothers and sisters right now who find themselves... Um, who find themselves being uh, pushed hard in, by hostile peoples and uh, who are being harmed and hurt, we pray that you would give them a voice and they would be able to proclaim the King 
King Jesus, and they would be able to proclaim the gospel, and that your spirit would be with them, and that they would know that you have never deserted them. May they be faithful to the very end. May we all be faithful to the very end. We pray, Lord, with Compassion International for a young fellow named Joseph in Nicaragua for his uh, recovery, that he would recover quickly from his accident, that you would grant him, Lord, to be restored and uh, build him up. Lord, we pray for a military chaplain. We pray for Lieutenant Colonel Mike Burgess of the V Corps chaplains at Fort Knox, Kentucky. We ask you, Lord, that uh, you would help him as he tries to navigate COVID and all these other things. Uh, and be able to still minister to people. We ask you to lead him as he leads others. Help him and through him, Lord, bring the gospel and the whole counsel of God to many, many people. Bless his Bible study he's doing right now through the book of Hebrews. And uh, we ask you, Lord, that you would guide him when it comes to his um, future in the military, that you would give, give him wisdom and discernment. Lord God, we pray for... Uh, our church, the care groups, as we begin to start them up in September, we ask you to guide us as we put all that together, that it would be a time of great encouragement for all and uh, strength and uh, fellowship. And especially this coming Sunday, as we have our big day of um, for officer elections and as we have our reception and as we talk about some of our ministries, that you would bless that time. It would be very encouraging to us. And then Sunday evening as we have our ordination and installation service, Lord, that that would be a blessing. Lord, we pray for Caleb and Anna and Judah. We ask you to watch over them and also for our friend Jim. We ask you to provide and strengthen each and every one. Lord, continue to provide for them emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, draw them close to you. May they May they know that you are with them and um, always, always rejoice in your goodness. And we pray for uh, a backyard missions, a local mission here in Oklahoma that is uh, an open door for many who uh, come usually from um, uh, the Middle Eastern countries and other places, Lord. And we pray that you would bless the work that, um, that, uh, that Matt and his wife are doing there. And we ask you to uh, enrich them in all that they're about. And Lord, we pray that uh, for today, tonight, our church, our elders will be meeting with 16 people, 16 people who want to join our church. How exciting is that, Lord? Thank you so much. And I pray that you would bless our time, that all of those who come would be really, really encouraged. The elders will be encouraged. And then when we get to present this to the congregation in a few weeks, uh, pre present them to the congregation, that our congregation would be um, encouraged as well. Lord, um, we pray that you would guide us as a country. We ask you to bless us, keep us from evil, keep us from harm. May we grow in, as a country in civil righteousness. Um, and may we do that which is moral and upright, Lord. We pray that you would lead us and lead our leaders. And finally, Lord, we pray for each and every one of us, almighty and everlasting God, you who are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and are willing to give far more than either, we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your richest mercies, forgiving us, forgiving us those things whereof our consciences are or ought to be afraid, and giving us those good things of which we're not worthy to ask, but only through the merits and by the mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. It's in his name we pray. Amen. That was morning prayer, dear friends, on this Wednesday, the 25th of August. We'll be back, Lord willing, tomorrow. Uh, until then, receive the Lord's blessing with these words from the end of Ephesians. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. Amen.